Great. I'm just going to, if Lodek has suggested that I go through this presentation, that uh, it is a couple of years old, um, but I think it's still relevant and, and it may be news to, to some people. So um, you may be aware that a couple of years ago, the Prime was updated and there was a, V2, uh, a G2 version, a Generation 2 version. Uh, and I just want to have a quick whiz through the differences between the Generation 1 and the Generation 2 uh, and just talk about some potential implications for applications if you're interested in uh, utilising the additional performance of the G2. So um, the, the G2 version of the Prime was, uh, it's described as a soft roll by HP because it was a, a version that they where they just changed the internal workings of it rather than um, launching a new version, giving it a new version number and all the rest of it. So they changed the hardware without announcing it. And the Prime is not the first machine to do this, uh, to go through this sort of process. There have been many, many hot, uh, soft rolls uh, with previous machines. And in Vlodek's book, The Guide to HP Calculators, there are a whole description of uh, hard uh, soft roll versus hard roll. Hard roll is where HP announced the change usually with a new model number. So we've seen previous soft rolls where firmware has been updated on different models to update uh, to fix buttons. Um, the HP 41 famously went through several redesigns. So we had the half nut redesigned. It, it uh, simplified the internals. The display was changed, but the performance remained unchanged. The 12C, of course, has been around forever, I think, hasn't it? And has had many modifications to the case, the battery compartment, the internals, the keyboards. Um, but uh, strangely, when HP brought out a new version that was faster, um, the feedback from users was that it, were, it couldn't possibly be giving the right answers. So that the, perform the improved performance versions were rolled back. Um, of course, there are the CP versions and all the other variations as well. But um, uh, the, the 12C, I, I believe, still runs the same speed as the 12C did originally because of uh, user demand. Uh, the 48G2 launched in 2003 with 128K of RAM, but uh, silently HP updated it to 256K, it didn't change the version number. Uh, uh, the model number uh, and didn't advertise that this was an updated model, um, despite the fact that it got um, it, it got twice the amount of memory. So the G2 version of the Prime, and I think if you were to buy a Prime now, you would be very unlucky to get a G1 version. And I think uh, the manuf the resellers that I've seen, they do specifically say that you'll be getting a G2 version. So what's the same? It's still a prime. It still looks the same. It's still uh, the case, the keyboard feel, the display all look the same. The contrast on the keys is still poor if you use energy saving lights like I've got above me. The blue key legends are much better. They're much more dense and, uh, um, and, and they, they are easier to read in poor lighting. The numeric keys the original, the original versions uh, were quite dark gray keys. The G2 versions have the lighter gray keys, the same as the last revision of the G1. And regardless of uh, which version, whether you've got a G1 or a G2, the firmware give, currently gives the same functionality. What has changed under the covers is that the G2, by necessity, has had to have a processor update. So in 2018, um, the uh, the original chip, the ARM5 chip that was in the G1 was updated to an ARM, ARM7. The process speed was increased. Uh, the amount of RAM was increased from 32 meg up to 256, double the amount of uh, flash storage, which 512 meg, uh, you know, probably way more than we need. The battery was increased in capacity and the fundamental operating system that the system uh, that it, you know is not apparent to you because you're just running a prime and um, that was uh, updated as well to reflect the new chipset the display marginally better contrast but i've i've heard equally that uh, some have observed some uh, minor flickering i've not experienced this myself 
So what does this mean? Um, it means that in, you get a faster boot up time. If you, if you uh, start the machine from scratch, it will, it will come up quicker. If you come out of light, uh, if you come out of light sleep, so if you've been using it, you turn it off, you turn it back on again a few minutes later, it comes up faster than the G1. If it goes into deep sleep, it does seem to take uh, a lot longer than G1. So if you've left it for maybe a week, it goes into a deeper sleep mode and it takes a while to, go, to, to come back. The additional RAM means that potentially it has the ability to handle larger matrices and all the rest of it. And the evidence, despite the fact that the CPU appears to be uh, a modest improvement in performance, it, it does come out as between two and three times faster in calculations. So the Savage benchmark, which we've used on calculators for many years, um, you can see a G2 version there highlighted in green, and the um, the G2 is, is more than twice as fast as a G1. Um, it is currently the fastest machine that we had on there. Um, the Swiss Micros Forum tested, uh, I, I saw a performance benchmark on there of a Galaxy S8 Plus. Okay, that's a bit old, out of date now, but that was slower running an emulator than the Prime G2. So uh, the Prime is definitely a, a bit of a speed machine in that respect. And as you can see, things like um, the TI-89s um, and going back to the 41, the 41CX at the top, um, it's much, much, much slower than these machines. And even HP's previous generation, HP 50, uh, massively slower than an HP Prime and certainly a lot, lot slower than the G2. Now, most of the time, you you would expect if you're developing software for a for a prime that you wouldn't really need to be aware of any differences in the hardware. Um, you would usually want uh, the behavior to be a, the same across all versions, but uh, there are certain applications where you might want to take advantage of the extra speed. And what's the best way to do this? Well, it's tricky. There are There is a version command on the primes. You can ask it uh, to give you the version number of the calculator and you end up with these horrific strings. And the snag is that we also have versions of the prime running on, as emulators on iOS, on Mac, on PCs and all the rest of it, and on Android phones. And consequently, um, the, there is a whole load of strings to wade your way through. You could look at the result from the memory command, because in theory, there'll be more memory available. But if you're running out of memory, you may get um, uh, the same result. So is there another convenient way of identifying whether you're running on an emulated prime, a physical prime generation one or generation two? So this is a bit of a plug. Um, <laughs> I A little while ago, I wrote this uh, very uh, dodgily named uh, racer game. You may uh, see certain similarities to uh, Outrun, um, which wasn't originally written by me. Um, this was really to, as, a, as a test to see whether I could write anything um, that was sort of had a bit of a wow factor on the Prime. So uh, we know it's got a color screen, it's got a touch screen, it's very fast. So what can you do? We, we haven't got access to machine code to assembly language that we had on the 50Gs um, and the, the RPL machines. So um, is, is the basic prime programming language fast enough? Well, it is, yeah. We can, uh, we can run a game like this and it, it works reasonably well. So as part of this game, uh, and this is the, the startup screen that you see, um, I, I, the, the technique that I've used is that I take several different images that are stored uh, in the prime and pull areas of them and blit them, yeah, do a, do a bit uh, copy of the image onto the display in order to create the parallax scrolling, in order to create the poly polygons and all the rest of it, um, and to put the different vehicles on the track. So all of these, the, the top, the sky, the background, the hills in the background, the trees in the midground, they're all loaded as separate grobs in initialization graphics objects. And you can load alternative sets. And if anybody fancies, they, they can go in and, and change them. Uh, I've put two sets in. So there's a daytime mode and a nighttime mode. You can switch between the two. So 
Um, in order to for the not to be apparent what's going on, what I do is I I preload all of these grobs into grob two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, beforehand, and then uh, move them one layer at a time into grob one, which is still off screen. Once that is completely built, along with the sixty nine polygons that are used to draw the road, the lines, uh, and the fields and the dis going off into the distance. They're all uh, they're all built into gra graphics object one, and then in a single command, graphics object one is copied into G zero, and that creates a very uh, a smooth effect. Now this image is drawn during initialization as, as part of the flash screen, and what I do is is there is a function in there if you look in the code called update world, and during the initialization when I'm drawing the splash screen. I time the length of time it takes for the prime to render that screen. And, and that, so we're, uh, if we refer to that as the render time. Now, at the moment, uh, it, the code is currently set to max out the G1 performance. So currently, it, the game runs at about seven frames a second. So if we think about the frame time, uh, one over the refresh rate, so currently about 0.143 of a second is what it takes to draw a frame on the G1. If we think about the wait time, then uh, we've got uh, the length of time that we have to wait um, between the frame time and the render time. On the G1, that's a very, very small number. But if you're running the game on an emulator or on a G2, then there's a wait time which is, which is significant. And the idea of this at the moment, the, this implementation, is that all calculators and the emulator versions all give the same experience. The wait time, incidentally, is a busy wait because there, was, well, there were some differences between emulators and physical calculators. So if we look at the difference between the two, um, the field effect, uh, the road effect going off into the distance, I, I've set a draw depth of, of 20 units of uh, field, if you like, 20 units of road going on into the distance. In a G1, uh, at seven frames a second, it takes 0.138 of a second to render that field, which leaves spare, uh, uh, spare freight CPU time every frame of 0.005 of a second. If you look at a G2, it is much, much quicker. So that goes up, that spare CPU time goes up to 0.09 of a second. Um, and what I've found is that I can increase the draw depth and get give a greater perspective. Uh, if I um, double that on the G2, I've still got spare CPU time. And if I double it again, I've got I've still got spare CPU time. So um, I can increase the draw depth and I can perhaps um, make a, a uh, uh, make some additions to the game as well. So the question is, how do we use the power? Well, increasing I, I could increase the frame rate it would mean that the G2 and maybe the emulator versions are slightly different to the G1 games. I could increase the draw depth. So what, what that practically means, if you look at the, the top picture on the left-hand side, you can see the dark and light green fields going off into the distance and, and the, uh, the stripes on the side of the road. If you look on the one on the right, then there are, tw there are actually twice as many of those. So that's, that's the effect that the draw depth increase uh, allows you to do. I did base this game, I didn't write this game completely from scratch. I did, um, it, it was an exercise for me to try and work out if I could do some graphics programming and if I could make Prime do what I wanted it to do and that sort of thing. And I was following uh, a tutorial on the web and uh, in this tutorial, um, the Outrun game that you can see at the bottom was implemented in JavaScript, so it runs in your browser. And maybe what I, what I use this spare CPU time for is for putting additional objects into the game. So the trees, the trees at the side, the posters, additional cars, that sort of thing. Um, and also I could look to improve the physics. So, so the G2 gives us options there. Uh, it doesn't mean that the experience is going to be different if you play the game in the G1 compared to other devices. Um, but it, it's a possibility for enhancements in the game. So there we go. That was a quick whiz through the Prime. I hope that didn't bore you all too much. Um, 
it, I think it's great that the platform is still being developed. It's a shame that it's got things like a, a bit of a hobbled RPN mode. We would all love it to be a, a full RPL machine perhaps as well. Um, the G1 Prime is still an incredibly fast machine. Um, the G2, if you want to use the additional speed, if it's important to you, then by all means, go out and buy one. If you like the darker key legends, um, then that, that may be a good reason to use it. It's not an essential upgrade, but, uh, but it, it is quite a, a nice improvement on the original version. And of course, well, hopefully, uh, we're still getting uh, software upgrades to the to uh, firmware version upgrades to the prime as well so there we go that's uh that was what i was going to cover i apologize for uh, not being cyril um if anybody's got any questions then uh, please feel free to unmute yourselves and ask away <laughs>